Hello, I'm Bruce Zimmerman, and this is the Open Line Garden Show podcast for this week. Now, top grafted standards are basically been around for a long time, but there seems to be more and more of them becoming available because they suit our smaller properties and landscapes and still gives you that sudden specimen, smack you in the eye type of look that you want in a garden. So people are buying these to use as a specimen to make their garden look a little more unusual, different, or at least something people will notice. And top grafted standards basically are uh, the stem is one kind of plant and the top is either budded or grafted as a different kind. So if you have hydrangea understock, then the top is budded or and grafted and you have another kind on top. So make sure that on the stem, as with all top grafted standards, the buds that develop on the stem are wiped out immediately with your hand. You don't want them to develop. If any shoots shoot up from the ground, cut them off, rip them up, whatever it takes to get rid of them. Because you do not want the understock. You want just the, the top. And you want the look of a standard, a miniature tree. Occasionally, the understock actually shoots up a bud up where the plant has been budded or grafted. Not all of them, not often, but they do. Please watch for it, and if that's the case, please cut it out. Nothing worse than a beautiful weeping top grafted standard with a straight stem growing straight up or off to one side and it's six feet long and six feet up from the rest of the plant. I have seen it. It's ugly. Let's just say it's ugly. Let's do some uh, malus. Now, malus is your crab apples. They're getting better and better with disease control, and this is what you're looking for when you're looking and picking out a basically a crab apple because you want it to be as easy to look after as possible. So the top grafted standards grow in exactly the same as what I've described. There are quite a few available. And the first one is called Coral Burst. This one is hardy to zone four. Its height is seven feet and spreads four feet. Coral buds that open to a double rose colored flowers. Now that's kind of neat but also the head is compact which is something else that's important so it is uh, basically a dwarf crab apple on a standard and it really does shine so remember the flowers are double like little roses that in itself should try and get you to look at it at least once maybe twice and look for a place for it in your garden they also have sir lancelot now this uh, crab apple is hardy to zone 3b height is seven feet spreads four feet it's a dwarf crab apple it's a really tight globe on about a three to four foot stem it's got snowy white blooms in the spring and golden fruit that persists into the new year so you're going into fall with yellow fruit on the plant even when there's no leaves you're still going to have yellow fruit. So that's another reason for it to go into your garden and look. And then there is lollipop. Now lollipop is also one that I really thought I was going to buy. I almost did for my garden. Now it didn't work out because I had some different thoughts and maybe it was a mistake. Maybe I'll I'll revisit it this year. Lollipop crab apple is hardy to zone three. Height is seven feet, spreads four feet, has red buds, flower buds, masses of white blooms, dwarf compact standard, miniature golden amber fruit. Disease resistant is very high, and like all of the crab apples, are virus certified clean, which is good. There you go. There's three good ones. 
There is a fourth one. Now, this one is called Tina. It's Sergeant Tina. And Sergeant is S-A-R-G-E-N-T. Crab apple. And it is a standard. Hardy to zone 3B. The height 7 foot. Spread is 4 foot. It has fragrant white blooms that have dark green foliage and tiny red crab apples. Dwarf tree. It's grafted on a 3 to 4 foot stem. So... That's not a bad one. And remember, fragrant. That's something that's hard to get into a garden as well. So if you're out in your garden in May when these usually bloom and you want some fragrance, there's the one. Okay. I'm going to skip over the the weeping mulberries. I, I just find them way too boring. But I will say this. There is one called Zigzag. Hardy to zone four. It's got a height of nine feet and nine feet across. The branches are zigzag, so it's weeping, but the branches zigzag down to the ground. Large green, shiny foliage. It's basically a top, flat topped canopy. It's grafted on a five foot stem, and of course, hardy to zone four. So it might be a little different. One I've seen used, and it's been around a long time, and I always see it used incorrectly. And this is the Blue Spruce Standard, and it, of course, very compact, very hardy. But it's always put in the wrong place, the wrong size. It's never trimmed when it's got the new growth coming out and it's still soft. And it becomes too wide, and it becomes misshapen, etc. So you have to do that trimming on it to make it look nice and neat. Otherwise, it's a little bit here and there, and not you. You can tell when somebody knows what they're doing with this particular plant. Hardy to zone two height is five foot, spread three feet. It's the very blue nest spruce. And it's very compact. It's top grafted on a two to a four foot stem. Very hardy. And it stands out. And it's evergreen. So it's there throughout the entire season. Throughout the entire year. And it's blue. So blue into a garden. It should be easy to contrast. But using it is difficult. Because they're usually quite short. And stem is long and what you put around them makes them stand out so maybe some rocks maybe some tulips or daffodils make sure you've got some creeping junipers maybe some of the golden creeping ones as a contrast but look after it because that little landscape that you're building there has to work right through the entire season 365 days a year and otherwise it just gets old and older and uglier so use it carefully and sparingly now there are also top grafted standards in some shrubs and so they are used less than the others that I've talked about The others are used more often. But there are some top-grafted standards that are shrubs, and I think we should cover them. Now, I'm not a big fan of willow, simply because I always find they get way too big and way too wild and etc. So, I will say this to you about that. Be aware of it. Be careful. Make sure it's in place in a place where you can get to it uh, all the way around and that you're going to be appreciated when the catkins are out plus what other features each of them has going for them. First one is the straight pussy willow standard weeping. Hardy to zone four, height six foot, spread six foot. Small weeping, it's got the silvery woolly catkins. Otherwise, it's a green one green leaves, down to the ground, and you're going to have to control the size. That's it. That's all there is. So don't put this as right up front, but this one is part of your garden, but certainly not as the 
focal point of a garden. Then we have flamingo weeping or standard willow. Hardy to zone four, heights 10 foot. Spread is six foot, so it's bigger. Deep red variegated foliage pruned several times during the growing season to produce new shoots in order to maintain the color and size. So make sure that uh, you're quite willing to prune this one at least two to three times each year through the the growing season. And then there's Nakushi Willow Standard. This one's been around for a while. It's zone four. It's got a height of 10 foot, spread of 6 foot, and it has translucent white leaves, bright pink branchlets. It is pretty. The leaves are strong. They're modeled with green and white variegation. The pinkish uh, new growth comes out. It's grafted on a 4 foot stem. You've seen this one. It's a willow. It just doesn't do much to me. Remember, you're going to have to keep this one trimmed to keep it in bounds and keep the color coming nicely. Though, you may only have to trim this one once or twice a year for color. But size, I have seen what happens when people don't trim this one. And they get to be really quite big for the space that they were put into. Remember, Hardy to Zone 4, it's got a height of 10 foot and a spread of 6 foot. So we've got all those. We also have purple weeping one. Uh, Now this is purple arctic willow. Looks different and it is a standard grafted zone 4. Height 8 feet. Spread is 5 foot. It's got the purple green slender leaves. It's top grafted. This one is actually good in the landscape but you've got to remember use it correctly. I'm Bruce Zimmerman, and this is the Open Line Garden Show podcast for this week.